don't know. It is the day after, and I have a letter from UCLA. Um, I suppose it, it's an outline of what happens next. Um, you can tell when I start wearing a lot of hats, it's because it's time to start to cut my hair. I just, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut it yet. I'm gonna grow out a little bit. I'm not, I don't want to have long hair, but I feel like I just did it. Um, and I kind of like it sticky up. It looks a little, honestly, I like it, but I understand that other people may not. I, I, uh, I don't know how I feel today. I don't believe I can say I feel any better. It hasn't been really enough time. I've had enough time to sleep and start work. You know, I did some work today. I haven't had time to really sit with it, which is good. I'm glad that I have work today because I, I think I would be crazy if I weren't working. So I got this letter here on my chart. Um, I'm trying not to read names. Not that it matters, like, uh, these UCLA doctors are, are, you know, big deal specialists, but still, they deserve their privacy too. And if I've ever said their names, I apologize. April 30th, 2024. Your case was discussed at the Transplant Selection Committee, and you have been accepted for liver transplant. Your local physicians have received a copy of your medical records and a copy of this letter. In addition, you are to have a follow-up visit with the hepatologist, a consult with a lipid clinic. Oh, she did, there's not a third thing. It was just a weird sentence. Um, and the consult, a consult with the lipid clinic. I guess that came up during presentation. That doctor's like, ooh. I haven't gotten my finger in this particular pie. Uh, have her come to me, uh, even though nobody's cared about the lipids except my PCP. I asked if I could have a video. Uh, anyway, we will be reaching out to coordinate scheduling these consults at UCLA and we'll inquire if a video visit can be performed. That I asked that specially. I, I really don't want to have to go all the way down there for just to talk to a doctor for 10 minutes, like, even two doctors, that's crazy. It is recommended that you follow up with your primary care physician to update your vaccine status. Hey, he's pushing for that. Once we have financial clearance, insurance authorization from your insurance company, we will contact you and schedule for your MELD labs, liver transplant listing labs, the comprehensive metabolic panel, which is like, um, all the things, uh, uh, not even just liver, you know, like, uh, diabetes and white blood cells and all that stuff. And INR, which is, uh, testing how fast my blood clots. Very, very important. I guess I don't, it doesn't say how often I'm going to have those labs, but I'm hoping that I can just get them here. It, it, uh, they can just order them here and I can get them and not have to go up to UCLA every single time they want to take blood because I feel like I should get blood taken at least at least once a quarter if not once a month and I don't want to have to go up to UCLA for that we will notify you by phone and in writing when we list you for your transplant please be aware that you will need to have abdominal imaging and an AFP every six months as a screening for cancer AFP is alpha fetoprotein, and that's a tumor marker that the liver would throw off if I develop liver cancer. Because cirrhosis, um, the next step from cirrhosis is liver cancer. Um, so that's another blood test. Every six months is screening for cancer. Please m mark your calendar and speak with me or your local physician's office to be sure that these studies are scheduled. So it looks like that I can get it done from here. Like, I would like, if I'm going to have to have an ultrasound or whatever every six months, we have those things here. We don't have to, I don't have to go up to Westwood. 
We thank you for considering UCLA for your transplant needs. Please contact me with concerns or questions regarding the content of this letter. And the referring provider that they sent it to was my old doctor. But that's because my gastro used her name to refer me. So I have to call my gastro today and make sure she got this. Um, she already has everything. It, well, I mean, she doesn't have like some, I think she doesn't have the stuff. Like, do I have valley fever or tuberculosis stuff? It's irrelevant to her. But she does have all the important stuff. I didn't send her my pulmonary stuff. But I'm not sure that's super relevant either. Um, I mean, she's a gastroenterologist, so. But she said she would follow me through the process, so I don't know. She, she didn't get back to me about wanting all the other stuff. So I'm not going to send her the pulmonary stuff. But I'm going to call today and see if they if they know and then I'll, um, I'll call Dr. Webman I think there's an element of emotional shock I've, I, I've been aware that this is definitely a possibility and in fact a probability since that day they took my blood at UCLA when I read those results I said I'm going to need a transplant. So it, it's not like this is blindsiding me like it did in October. But when it becomes real, it's something else. And I know people go on the list and they're there for years. And going to the doctor every six months or going to get a lab or a thing every six months is, you know, my blood or uh, an imaging, not a big deal. I don't want to have liver cancer. They're trying to help me. never thought I'd be okay at this point and I'm okay so when I get to the other points logic tells me I'll be okay so I think that's good for today um, if anything else comes of course I'll come back and update I'm not okay now, but I will be. Thank you for watching.